Hello all together. I'm here today with Patrick McDonald and we will talk about inclusive development of an education system. In the previous e uh, video, we addressed how important it is to have a permeable system, isn't it? Now, today, we want to enlarge the scope of an education system towards what we called is informal and non-formal. Are you familiar with these terms? I am, but I think it's a good idea to talk about them a little more because they're really important forms of education that we don't always think about when we think about education systems, do we? Right, right. Uh, I, I'm particularly, I like to talk about that because I think nowadays, worldwide, people have more competences learned informally or non-formal. And that's why um, we should address that in a video and tell people how we can recognize this kind of skills and this is exactly uh, what this video is about. So informal and uh, non-formal learning is about skills you have not learned, let's say, at school, outside the formal school, outside the formal program. And the question is how can you recognize this type of skills and competences so you have a kind of a currency later on in the formal system. That means recognition of prior learning, or PL, is a procedure which helps you to recognize your competence, formal or informal. Patrick, do you have any informal competences you are aware about? Well, I know that I can make good coffee, but I don't really know where or how I learned that. It sort of just happened. Yeah, right, right, isn't it? And I guess, are you not in music also? I am. I learned a lot of that at school, but it's true that most of the things that I can do musically, I guess I learned on my own. Yes, and I'm sure the listener, they have a lot of this kind of informal competencies. So I invite you to think about, maybe you have some ideas. Today, we want to now talk more about um, how you separate them. So on the slide we show you actually, we uh, basically explain what is lifelong learning. And lifelong learning consists of foundation. Foundation is basic competence. It's very simple. Reading, writing, numeracy and simple ICT skills. So without that, it's very difficult to get access to any education forms. Then we make the distinction between uh, so-called formal education. These are programs which are regulated in a law, in a formal education law, um, regulated by the Ministry of Education mostly. And it's about the upper secondary education level. It's about the bachelor, master, PhD program or a professional education and training diploma. Now, non-formal education are seminar courses, a private lesson, conference, they are kind of structured courses to have a program, but not regulated by any education authority. And the third type is this invisible uh, kind of competence where we have talk, uh, spoken about. It's the informal education learn, uh, you read while uh, you learn while you are reading, you are doing things at work or you play an instrument, for example. It's not intentional, not structured, structured and not regulated. So the three forms together is what we call the education system and leads to lifelong learning. And I guess, I mean, you could say that, that informal learning is probably where we do almost the majority of our learning, right? Yeah, it's correct. We even know from a study from the Canadian Labour Force survey that uh, people in the labour force in Canada, they have acquired their 66% of their competencies informally. So it does make sense that education systems should think about a way of recognizing some of the learning that you might do in these informal settings. Absolutely. And this is uh, especially what we show you on this slide. Now in the middle of the next slide, you have the full permeable system where we have a video uh, on it. What is a permeable system? But this is basically about the formal education. Now, informal and non-formal uh, skills are outside the formal education system, especially in developing country. This is an extremely important topic because most of the people have never had the chance to really get access to uh, one of the formal program. And that the question is, how inclusive can we organize an education system? So the idea is either um, recognizing skills which you have learned outside, not at school, uh, 
uh, not in a course and or in, in a course, that means non-formal and informal, informal learning, organize a procedure and recognize that so that you get access to the formal education. This is what we call recognition of prior learning. But you could also take, I suppose, another tactic to recognize or integrate informal learning into an education system. And that could be that where you might have a, an education program that's missing in a pathway. So say you've already got a system that's only academic, which we've spoken about in a couple of videos before, but you have got informal learning opportunities that are a little bit like what a secondary level vet position would be. Mm -hmm. Then maybe something that you could do is formalize that program and make it a part of the education system to increase the options that are available. That's a very good point. And especially in developing country where a lot of young and older people learn with a master craftsman in a workshop, you know, informally in the informal uh, labor market, that's basically the main route in developing countries. Hence, if you could formalize this kind of skills by adding formal education, that would be very helpful, especially for obviously for the young people to enter the education system and to basically be able to climb up the ladder within the education system. And we do have an example of this, don't we, from one of our LILAM TVET for Income Partner countries where a program is, I guess, on the way to becoming a formalized part of an education system, isn't it? Absolutely. Yeah, we have several countries, but for me, one of the really convincing program was organized in Benin. And I guess you know more about that and you may explain us how this works. So the program is called uh, the CQP, which is um, the Certificat de Qualification Professionnelle, for those of you who speak French. And what it does is it takes the informal learning that a lot of people in Benin do with master craftsmen in their villages or in their communities. And it combines this learning with um, formal education at a vet school at an ISCED level two. So the informal learning keeps going and is, is valued, but it's also combined with something that could help you get a formal recognition. Um, through a formal program at the secondary vet level. Now, this is clearly a work in progress so far. It's, um, what is the scope about? Is it really a broad scope in the whole country or? So not yet. It's, I would say, still in, a, in, in an early phase, maybe a little bit beyond a pilot phase, but um, so there's cohorts. We're talking of cohorts of nearly 1 million students overall in Benin at certain age groups. And of those 1 million, only about one to 4,000 are involved in this CQP program. Um, that's out of about 30,000 overall who take on TVET in, in Benin. So it's still relatively small, but, but it's growing. And it's important what you have said. I mean, if you start to re-engineer your education system, in my view, it's extremely important that you start small, make a good proof of concept, and I would say three to t uh, four thousand people is a lot in a in a you know first um, uh, launching phase of an initiative, and it's that's in all country the problem that you cannot go very fast if you don't have really a good role model. Absolutely, and I think that the CQP program is actually starting to show that it's working quite well, and is probably getting to the point where we now have this proof of concept and it could be expanded. And we've done a bit of research into this to see how the CQP works and what the outcomes are, are, are like. And one of the things we use is our Education Employment Linkage Index, which we developed here at the Chair of Education Systems. What we, is this about? Well, can, it, can you explain a little bit what is this Education Employment Linkage Index? We call it LE for short. It's much faster. <laughs> and what we do with the LE is we measure how closely actors from the education system and the employment system work together in education programs. And we know that this is really important because as we've covered in, in other videos, the closer that the two systems work together, the better the outcomes can be for young people because it means that they can get a really good, strong education within a labor market setting so that their skills can be really what the employers need and can stay up to date.
Is it just to design a program together or is it more than just designing together a program? Designing the program together is obviously really important, but what's also important is the collaboration between the actors with things like providing resources, with examination, with um, the where the learning happens, what the workplace regulation looks like. The cost sharing is obviously a really important thing. So the whole value chain. Absolutely. So right across all of the different processes that happen in an education program, we're looking to see how the linkage between the actors go. And what we actually see in Benin is that on some things in the CQP, they're above the average, which is really impressive for a program that's relatively new and relatively small. Um, So it looks like it's the basis for what could be a really successful formalization of an informal program and therefore providing more recognition of skills learned for young people in Benin and granting them better opportunities on the labor market later on. So if I understand you correctly, this means that you don't need to destroy the informal labor market, you just use that sector productively and you add the formal part of the education system. And in fact, destroying the informal labor market could be counterproductive in some in some ways. Mm-hmm. Oh, cool. I mean, this is a way, just an example where we would have more of it to, to tell you about. But I, I think this is a convincing approach because nowadays it's extremely important in reforms that you work with what is existing in a country and try to Im- improve that. And in a, a in a permeable system, when we come back to our main topic, permeable system, it's so extremely important that also the learner don't need to start from scratch in a formal education system. No, they have uh, earned or re- um, acquired a lot of competences and we should find ways how we can recognize them, correct? Right, and the mantra that we've always talked about of a permeable system means no dead ends also means that the learning that you do outside of the system shouldn't be a dead end either. That should be something that you can use to get yourself further in your education, be it with a recognition of prior learning process or with the formalization of a previously informal program. So sure, good. So we have shown now an example how you can combine the informal labor market aspect with the formal system to recognize what was learned in the informal sector. And I think it's a very compelling case. And we, we hope that uh, Benin can move forward on that and demonstrate to other countries that this may be also an option for other countries. Absolutely. So thank you very much, uh, Patrick, for this talk and uh, looking forward to your next uh, our next interaction. Thanks. Thanks for listening. Thank you.